morning. We're at Bartlett Lake, just 40 miles northeast of Phoenix. We've got a beautiful morning out here. It's dead summer. I mean, it's 105 degrees, 108 degrees out here. I'm Gary Semps, fishing in Arizona. And what we're going to be doing is teaching a lot of you that don't know how to catch fish and you come out here and you only catch one or two fish. So what I want to do is teach you how to catch fish on these Arizona lakes. So we'll be visiting Bartlett Lake, Lake Pleasant, Roosevelt Lake, Apache Lake, and we'll show you some tricks that nobody else seems to show you. I've got some brand new techniques with drop shotting, different poles, different styles. And I'll be explaining this as we go and we do all of our little tricks and stuff and how to rig these. And I hope this teaches you a lot of things about bass fishing because too many people get frustrated. That's one thing that happens to me at the Bass Pro Shop when I'm walking around down there is people just can't catch the fish or they can't find the fish. So what we want to do is teach you everything so you can come out here with your wife, your kids, and have a really good time. So we're going to take off from here. We're going to go up fish out in different parts of the lake and show you exactly where I cast, what I do, and how to catch these fish. What we're doing, folks, is we're just going along the shoreline like this. And one of the number one places to actually catch fish is on points, points, reefs. So if you don't know where to fish and you just stop on the shoreline and you just go along the shore, um, you need to like go where the fish actually live, you know, as a, uh, as I'm talking and stuff, the cameraman will shoot around and he'll show you some of the stuff that I'm actually fishing, the boulders and, and reefs. But if you can find these marker buoys out here that say, you know, island or reef or something like that, and you can see the points up there, you know, up, up along there that are, that are also good, you know. So what I'm doing today is I'm gonna show you, like I talked to you in the introduction, I'm gonna show you some, uh, different ways to drop shot. And I'm gonna stop with, and you know the, the normal way of drop shotting is tying that polymer knot. And how many of you that have caught a fish, when that fish comes in, he's all tangled up, you can't get it untangled, and you, you go, oh man, I'm tired of this. I gotta keep cutting my line and redoing the knot and retying the hook and stuff. I've devised a way, no knots. When the fish comes in, he, you hook him and he slides right down to the sinker. Really, re, really neat way. So basically, um, you still have your little sinker down on the bottom. And what I do is I kind of take a knife and open up that clasp a little bit because I've got to tie, I've got to tie that on there. Because what happens when you set the hook, this is gonna slide right on down, just like this, right down there. Now, you're fighting the fish on your sinker. So you want that tied on there, two or three knots, at least three knots. All right, and the, what I was talking about, the bobber stoppers, it's a, it's a, used to use for bobber fishing and stuff, so I call it uh, drop shot bobber fishing, you know. And uh, it's real easy to do, so I'm gonna got, let me get a package out and actually show you the two different types of um, bobber stoppers that I use, all right. I'm with the Bass Pro Shop for nationally, I use their product, but it's a good product. They're very inexpensive to use. And then I have another one that I use, it's called the Six Cents. Now there's two types of bobber stoppers, one for a heavy line, like six 10 pound test line, which is these, the smaller diameter line, or you can use the 10 and 12 pound uh, bobber stopper. So these are so easy to use. Let me just take one out of here and show this to you. People are always confused when they, when they hear me talking about it, but they actually don't get to actually see. Now, I'm gonna just separate them. They come in different colors, but if, if you can actually see this where the bobber, red bobber stopper is, there's a little loop right on the very top of that. And your line goes through that loop. So you stick about two inches of line through, you turn around, you grab the bobber stopper like this, and you just pull it and you pull it about two, three inches and it goes right through the line and then it looks, the aftermath looks like what I'm fishing with. Like right here, that's it. So I put a bobber stopper on first, then I take and I put my hook, my regular hook, and now I'm gonna face that hook always up. Because you know in drop shot, that hook's gotta be up so when the fish bites, it hooks in the front lip like that, 
but right now I can slide that. So that's gonna slide up and down. So what I gotta do is I have another bobber stopper hooked on here. When I get the um, hook on, I'm gonna grab the lower bobber stopper and I'm just gonna feed this right on up to the other one, just like this. And now I'm ready. So when I catch a fish, I'm gonna show you how that just slides down and you have no more of that tangled mess. You don't have to cut your line. You don't have to do any of that. It's so easy to do. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh. So I've been fishing this for about two years now, three years, came up with this idea. And I teach this in my class at the Bass Pro Shop here in Mesa, Arizona. And some of you may be watching from other states or other countries, in fact, cause it's gonna go all over the place. So, um, later I'll be coming up with some kits and stuff about, you know, just get the whole kit about how to fish these. So in Arizona here, now, you know, I know in other states, um, they like to have their leader like maybe up here. But the good thing about this is you can slide this up or you can slide this down. Now, last night I was here and I was fishing a brush hog. Now, I use everything. I don't just use worms. I use brush hogs. I use lizards. I'll use all that. So at night, your bass are turning to crawdads, not shad. So what I did was I just lowered that down to like this, and I was using a brush hog. And all I was doing was fishing like four inches because that bass is seeking the bottom, and he's looking for that movement on the bottom. So let's, uh, let's try fishing with this just a little bit here and see if we can't get something. And like I said, I'm just fishing points and reefs and... and uh, buoy lines and stuff. And we're gonna just kind of keep moving around the lake, give you an idea where I fish and what I fish around the lake. It's dead calm right now. A little bit later, the wind will pick up and that's gonna actually help, help the fishing. So you all know that early in the morning, you, uh, the bite is pretty good for the first hour, hour and a half. And then it slows down. And then here at Bartlett, the hotter it gets, the better the bite is. So you'll see as we go on in the day, the cameraman will be sweating, I'll be sweating. It'll be 105 degrees. So I'm just gonna cast out, pitch out to those. Now I'm using a bait caster, as you can see, and I'll show you, I have two other rods rigged up with drop shot. I mean, I like the bait caster because you never know when you're gonna get that big fish in, that three, four, five pounder. And uh, I like to be ready and I can fight him you know, with this. So we're out pretty deep right now. We're 42 feet, so that's a little bit too deep. So I use this drop shot just like a Texas rig, exactly like a Texas rig. I might throw this thing in two feet of water, or I might fish it in 35 feet of water. It all depends on where the fish are. You have to find the fish and find out what depth they are so when you catch your first fish, you want to like look at the rand and say, oh yeah, I'm sitting in 25 feet of water. I caught him halfway back to the boat. He's in 12 feet of water. So you can target those fish for at least an hour or so, you know, in 12 feet of water. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of follow these rocks around here and keep just kind of throwing up. And I'm going to find out, are the fish in three feet of water, four feet of water? Where are they? today you know so I'm casting way up there I'm pitching way up there and I'm sitting in 33 feet of water now I see fish on my graph right now of course you always see fish on your graph all the time so nothing new about that is there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just let that hit the bottom now I could tell you this for those of you that are beginners 90% of the time when you throw your bait out you need to reel that line up and have that line ready to go and watch it on a tight line. Because 90% of the time, if a fish sees that and goes to the bottom, he's gonna take it. That's how quick it is. So you don't wanna be throwing it out, laying your rod down, eating an apple or whatever, because if he picks it up, you're gonna miss the bite, all right? So, so that's how I do this. And I usually hold my rod up to detect that bite. There's little tricks that all of us have about holding the line and, and pitching. If you can learn to pitch this out and I usually let this a little bit past there and I just sling this out like that. So fishing isn't only just fishing, you have to really practice sometimes and get good at it. So what I'm doing is I'm following that down, all right? And as I follow it down on the tight line, 
I can basically tell how deep it is without, you know, if I'm sitting in 30 feet, I know that my bait just sank to 15 feet of water, okay? So I'm down in 15 feet of water. I, I didn't get a bite. I'm pulling up on it. I'm going to pull this thing or hop it a couple of times along just to see if they'll bite. Whoa, there's some fish schooling right there. Here's a little minnow that got away. It's a little crooked, but sometimes when they come up like that and they school, you could throw your line out there and they'll come back and hit your, uh, hit your line if, you could, if you're that close to them. We'll have other segments in the show where I wanna show you how to Texas rig and catch fish Texas rigging, how to, how to fish jigs, you know, really good and catch fish on that because you have to be versatile. Carolina rigging is another good way of catching fish. So we plan on bringing you a lot of different techniques on different lakes in Arizona, show you the beauty of our lakes, the cactus, the mountains and stuff. It's not just in Phoenix, Arizona. We're out here in a really beautiful country. So we're just gonna kinda look around here. I'm still pretty deep, 38 feet. So I'm gonna pull in just a little bit and just kind of flick it out there. A lot of people ask me, well, Gary, how long do you stay in one spot? You know, what, how long is it? I don't stay in one spot. I'm constantly on that trolling motor moving around. So if I'm not catching fish over on this rock pile, I give it about five flips, you know, in there. And if I don't, if I don't catch a fish, you know what, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna move on because I'm not fishing Excuse me there. I'm not fishing where the fish are. I've got to keep moving to find those fish. And that's what a lot of people do. They make that mistake of not moving enough. You know, you'll see that we just kind of keep moving around and, and you know what, you can fish this thing fast. You know, I'm a power fisherman when it comes to this stuff. Um, I'll throw it out and then move it around. And I like to bump into those rocks and pull it up over the rocks and, and try different baits, different colors. Maybe this morning dawn isn't working that good today. Maybe it's red crawler, you know, might be red crawler, or maybe it's a, a brush hog. So I'll pick up a, another bait here in a minute and I'll, and I'll try that. If I don't get any bites in 10, 15 minutes, I'm definitely gonna try something else. So we're just gonna tool around. There's a lot of big boulders underneath us. Now, Brush hogs and jigs and stuff like that are a good bait to fish around, stuff like this, but definitely around the, there's a bite right there. He just, oh, missed him. Uh, he just pecked it. Sometimes you get those real little bass and they'll just, they'll just hit the, uh, the worm. And uh, a lot of times I'll bring that bait out so it's actually outside the worm. So I'm getting stuck right now on this thing right here. So we'll try it again over there. And if you, if you do get a bite, you can cast right back in the same thing right there. You know, I'm just fishing on those boulders right there. You can cast right back in there because he didn't get stuck with that hook. He knows he just got a bite or he bit on something. So I like, I like to throw it out and then just kind of pull her a little bit and let it go back down, climb it up over these rocks, just kind of pull it up, drop it back down because that's what they're on. We don't have a lot of trees in this lake. You know, you can see that there's, this is barren, the lake is. There's a few trees up the lake, way up of the rivers, but right here, we're just fishing the rocks. So all we're doing is just fishing rocks. So those fish get accustomed to living on the rocks. So, you know, I cast about five times up there to those up there. Now I'm gonna try fishing over here and fishing this stuff over here. So, you know, like I said to you, points are uh, a lot better and reefs and stuff like that. So um, we can just kind of move around and, and I won't just take off and go down the shoreline unless I'm cranking or something like that. So when you see birds like that standing over there on the shoreline over there, that's a good thing. Of course, if they're down in the water, now early in the morning, real early in the morning, when it's, when it's the sun's just before it comes up, there's a lot of shad that'll be on the bank and that bird will be over there just pecking away. So he's already had his breakfast, but he's still waiting. You know, maybe some more will come up or a bluegill will come up or a little bass will come up and he'll eat that. They'll, those birds will eat a, I've seen them eat a one pound bass before. 
So they'll eat anything that swims by them. They almost look kind of prehistoric the way they move. So he's creeping down to the water right now. He's checking it out. All right, so we moved to another spot. And um, I'm going to try a brush hog on a drop shot just to see if that's something different. And I'm going to switch around and try different, different uh, baits. But if you're not seeing fish on your depth finder, you know, you're... Uh, you need to kind of keep keep moving around, you know. So I've noticed that we have a little breeze coming out, so that's kind of good. That's a good thing. It keeps us cool in this hot weather, and also it's going to make the fish bite a little bit. It, you know, puts a little ripple on the water. So I'm going to just move her along at a steady pace, looking for fish. So I'm fishing the traditional way of drop shotting right now. I've actually tied this on. So I'm gonna show you several different ways that I, I fish, but I'm, I'm leaning towards that um, bobber stopper drop shotting because it's so easy. You know, like I said, I don't like that mess of it tangling up. And I'm using a very, very short leader because I'm actually using a creature bait and I want that almost touching the bottom. You'll see as we get different places, when you find fish, they'll actually, you can actually catch them and they'll bite, you know. And not only do I use the morning dawn, but I'll use red crawler and, and some of those baits a little bit. So, getting a little heavy here. Uh-oh. What's that? A little heavy? That means there's a fish on it. Okay. Oh, here comes one. So, you know, once you get them coming, you can just swing them right in the boat like this, you know, and catch them. Just a little, little tiny buck bass. So, we're going to keep throwing in the area here and see that one was in about 10 feet of water. But he wasn't quite over where the fish were feeding. I can see him still feeding right over in that area right there. They're coming this way, so I'm just going to kind of head him off. Oops, I'm in 24 feet. I want to always stay, try to stay a little bit away from your fish. You know, some guys, the one problem I see with a lot of guys is they go right over the point or they go right where the fish are. You know, it's always better to stay back. Stay back in 30, 35 feet and cast, you know, out where the fish are. Don't, uh, don't go out in 15 feet where the fish are right underneath you. Cause you know, you got that depth finder going, you got your trolling motor going. And believe me, they can hear that. So just think a little bit more, you know, just little tips like this will help you catch more fish. All right, I'm gonna go out a little deeper off the side of this little island here and see if there's a, oh, there's one already. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. So sometimes, you know, when you got the little ones, it's easier just to, once they come up, just bring them right in the boat, you know. I'll tell you a little secret. I Once you grab the bottom lip like that and you just, you know, paralyze them like this, you can just let them go like that. That way, if you keep them out of the water too long, you know, they get a little bit more lethargic and uh, they can't swim down to the bottom as fast. So you want to try to try to protect your fish in your area. And if you're going to eat any fish, I'll tell you, those little ones are really good eating. You know, don't keep that big one like we saw earlier, that big three, four pounder. I know a lot of guys that are meat hunters and stuff, but those fish really don't taste that good. They really don't. They're more fishy and stuff. I know you get uh, more meat off the fish, but you know what? We need to harvest some of these little fish, these 12 inchers, one pounders. Well, we got another one, folks. This one seems a little bit bigger. Just a little. And eh, not much bigger, but a little. These fish fight hard. You know, you catch them deep like that. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Here he comes. So I'm gonna grab him by the lick, lips, freeze him, and wham, bam. 
put my bobber stopper down. You know, as I had talked earlier that there's so many questions I get when I get down on the floor of the Bass Pro Shop. I wish we would could be there and have all these people come up and ask, but there's so many of you that are brand new to fishing. I mean, brand new. You don't even own a rod and reel. And it's, what kind of rod do I get? What kind of spinning rod do I get? What kind of you know line do I get? And then there's so many people that have spinning where they open the bale up and you cast, but they want to go to this bait caster. They buy this thing, they get home, and the first thing is they can't, they can't throw it. it. They're getting bird nests continuously. All right, let's show the audience how to throw a bait caster. And a lot of people can't throw into the wind, so I suggest throw across the wind or with the wind. You know, how I teach at the Bass Pro Shop is, you know, you have this long handle. I keep that under my wrist like this. Always keep the handles up, always. The rate of fall is another thing. You know, if it's falling like this pretty fast, this little knob here is a tension bar. And that keeps the, that keeps the bait from falling real fast. So you just barely want it to fall, that's it. So that's good. I set this little dial from one to 10. I set it on six and that's the magnets. So with this up like this, and it's all in your wrist, you know, see how you cock your wrist? If you have bad wrist, it's kind of hard. You can't sit there and throw your whole arm. It's fishing is flicking it on your wrist. So don't even think about it. Just throw it. You, at first, just try lobbing it out, you know, throw it up, up high. And you'd be surprised. Don't throw it, don't try to throw it hard. Just kind of lob it out there. It, it'll go out 30, 40 feet, no problem, you know. So I'm aiming at that point over there. I got my handles up like this, and I cast. Just barely throwing it, and I went 40 feet. How much more do we need to get to that shoreline, you know? So when you guys buy these things, you know, and I hope that you watch these videos. I'm going to give you tips because there's so many people that want, want to buy these, but they just don't buy them or they buy them and they don't throw them and they're just sitting in their closets. Just break them out and try some of these little tips. It actually works. You know, when I, when I bring it in, I'm, the handles are to my side like this, you know. So I'm working this a little bit aggressive. I'm pulling it along the bottom, you know. I'm not going to sit and pull this all the way back to the boat because I'm trying to power fish, all right. Now, if you really want to learn a technique that's neat is grab the sinker, put it to your reel, hold your rod down, and pitch out there like that. Now, you can sit at home and you can have a little hose in a circle or a coffee can or a little bucket or something. If you're a more experienced fisherman, pitching is really fun. And you can hit your target, I mean, within inches of where you want to fish. So. You know, if I'm fishing close to the bank and I want to get, you know, close to what I, the target I want to hit. Now there's a rock just under the surface over here, all right? And it's close to the bank and it sticks out a little bit off the bank. There's some boulders there. So I'm going to just point my rod towards it and I'm going to shoot back and try to get that within a foot or two. Because I promised you at the beginning of the show, I want to show you where to fish. Don't just go along the shoreline and just fish. So you see that rock that's just under there? See that? You can pitch that just on the other side, just on this side of it. You don't want to go on the other side. And so you let it go all the way to the bottom. You didn't get nothing. I hop it a few times. Didn't get a fish. So I'm going to reel up. And I'm going to just throw it to the other side. I'm going to work both sides of that. Now, if there's a fish there, he's probably going to take this because usually they can't refuse these brush hogs, you know, and it's getting warmer out. The blue wind's blowing into the shore, you know, the shatter. They're starting to feed again. So we're just going to kind of, if you don't catch any, just move on. Just keep moving, you know. A lot of times I'll take this with the handles up like this and I'll just go right in front of me and I'll just throw it. But remember, you got to keep your even though you do that, you still got to keep that thumb loose on that line because it'll come flying off because I didn't set this tension bar that, that, that strong. Remember, you can keep setting that stronger and stronger if you're getting a little bit of a backlash. 
So here's a really good example of a good spot right here. I mean, you got rocks coming way out. You got a point coming way out. You got a, you got a buoy there marking, a, you know, marking it. So I'm just going to start by pitching out on this side as I move up to it. It's 20 feet of water. So far we've been catching our fish in like, except for that big one, it came deep. But those other ones were in 12, 15 feet of water. Nada. I'm gonna move this down because I think those fish are, if they're not chasing shad, they're eating crawdads. Let's try that. Remember, we can just grab that thing and just, just move it right on down. Those little bobber stoppers, we don't have to untie anything or loosen anything. We just play with it and just see where those fish are or how, how much they want that leader. Sometimes they want that leader real long and you just put that leader on there and you can just throw it in and let, it, let, the, let the bait sink like a Cinco. Or sometimes I even use Cinco's. I'll put a little Cinco on there and wacky style it. So I'll throw that a little bit further up by those rocks coming out. What I'm doing is I'm fishing fast. I'm just going along the shoreline fast and I'm power fishing. I'm looking for that, looking for that real fast 90% bite. So I'm throwing it out, you know, I'm looking for the right depth. I'm in 24 feet of water right now and I'm throwing it halfway out to the boat. I'm not throwing it right on the bank, but I'm just looking for that active fish that's going to be either an active fish in a certain area. Now I'm not fishing a point yet. You know, but that's going to be the best place. But sometimes our fish will hold on this steep stuff. I like fishing this real steep stuff in the summertime because it drops off so fast. It's got a 90 degree angle. And when you throw your bait up and three feet off the bank or five feet off the bank, you're 10 feet deep. So that's what I'm looking for right now. Plus I'm watching the graph too. So as I watch the graph, if I see fish that are out further, like say, you know, out in 15, 20 feet of water, I'm gonna fish for those also. So we're gonna find out what depth the fish are at and what color do they want? Or do they want a worm or do they want a creature bait today? So we'll just kind of give it a little bit of, little gas on the pedal and we'll throw it up. Sometimes things like this where I just threw in this little crevice coming down here, this little cut, it has rocks and stuff like that. That's good because those fish sometimes will congregate in that area because the bass are moving along the shoreline and the crawdads are where the rocks are. Very rarely are the crawdads just climbing on the, on the smooth rock. I mean, they do on the boulders, but on smooth rock like that, they don't. Not that much. So I'm gonna make one more cast up there. We'll go real shallow and just let it creep right on down the wall. Sometimes that's productive. And sometimes this area of the lake just isn't any good. You know, like I said, I'm gonna just keep moving until we find them. Eventually when to run into them, they're gonna be biting. So you can see that there's a pretty good spot coming up. I mean, here we have sheer wall and now we have a point. So we're gonna stay back far enough to where I can pitch that bait up close enough to the point and I'm gonna work that out because that's where our fish are gonna live on these points. So I'm gonna start at the base of the point and then I'm gonna just work my way right on out. So what we do is we go three feet from the point. I'm gonna watch my line go out. It went down right away. So that just means that it's not very deep. In fact, I can see, I can see that there's a big boulder, right? I've got Polaroids on and that's good to have too is the Polaroid glasses. So I just went over a big boulder and just let it go down just to see if there's any fish on those drop-offs. I'm just fishing the steep drop-off. And we'll fish some other real steep drop-offs too in the lake. So I'm looking with my Polaroids and I'm seeing this, this big old rock kind of here, but not on the point. It's just another underwater 
point. I'm looking at, there's one. Oh, I missed him. Well, this is what happens. This is what happens when they take your bait and you're not fast enough. You know what? Let me explain something. A lot of times I take pit people fishing and um, they're inexperienced and stuff. And they'll say, oh, I just, I just got a bite. I go, whoa, you know what? You got a bite, but that, that bait is in that fish's mouth. You need to like set the hook, you know, drop it down and set the hook. So that's what you have to do. You have to snap it. Everything is a snap. Sometimes people won't snap it and they'll just kind of pull it a little bit. Well, if you're using a real sharp hook and just a real thin worm, it'll go through that. But on these big pieces of bait here, these brush hogs and stuff like that, there's a lot of meat on there. And you got to bring that hook, you know, through that. Well, the camera's here. I'm going to show you something. All right, it's 29 feet right here, 82 degrees. There's the bottom right there. Look at the shad right here. Remember we talked about shad having shad in the area? So when you're fishing around a point and you see stuff like that, that's, that's tremendous. So we're gonna kind of just pull out here away from the bank and I'm just gonna make a few casts. I had one bite up on the, on the bank there off the point. Let's come across the point on a different view. And this point drops off really fast. So what I'm trying to do is I'm out in 29 feet of water. I've dropped off the end of this point. And a lot of times I like to come off the end of the point and then just let my bait drop right on down to 29, 30 feet from 15 feet to 30 feet. And sometimes that's where the really big fish are. They'll be down there deep. They're, they've already had their breakfast in the morning and they're, they're just lounging down there in 30 feet in their comfort zone. Cause you know, bass like that 65 degree water. They don't like it 82 degrees cause it's pretty warm for them. They'll come up and they'll feed in it. Seems like the little ones can, can like it, but the big ones would rather be down deep to where they can, you know, feel at home. Make another one with this brush hog. I had one bite on it and missed it. We'll just kind of keep fishing this way a little bit. Before I change, I want to try this just a little bit more. And just kind of let that go down. Sometimes you have, have to have patience because, you know, I just got a little one quarter ounce drop shot on there. That's all. But you know, I just let it go down and then I'll just kind of give it a little bit of the trolley motor and just kind of pull it along down there. And you never know, there might be some big boulders down there or rocks and. We'll just kind of pull it right over. I can feel it going over the rocks right now. I can feel that just bouncing on those rocks. And that's usually, you know, when they're, when they're aggressive, that's when they'll take it, when you come up over that rock or that boulder. So I'm gonna give it line and let it go back down over the boulder because I came over the top of it. Now it's gonna go down. There we go, just went over another one. All right, so I'm gonna cut in the shore because we're, we're going out too deep now. We're going out to 46, 50 feet. And sometimes in the winter I can catch them that deep, but uh, right now, in the summertime, I haven't been getting them. They just don't want to hit that deep right now. They'll hit at 25 and 30, but they don't want to hit that real, real deep. I guess they'll come in all sizes. I, yeah, I guess they come in all sizes. You got to take the small with the big, you know, but this little guy, these are aggressive, I'll tell you. Get him back in the water, so. You know, basically, I've just tied this on, and and we're just using a typical old brush hog, just a little chartreuse, and I run this down like this, and we're just kind of just flipping it on out there, you know. Let's try a little bit of this side of the island and see what happens, the wind side of it. 
this should start picking up now. It's 10 o'clock, so this this bite should start getting going here right now. 10, 11, 12 o'clock. They really start turning on. This is what I caught her on. Unique little thing. Nice little brush hog. Uh, watermelon candy made by Zoom. And I tell you what I do to these things to make it even a little bit more interesting is I dip the tail in chartreuse. You can see how much more yellow that is than, uh, oh, she ate one of them off, that's all right. So I dip that in there uh, when I'm fishing deep like this and let's, uh, let's throw it up on the ledge. I mean, I'm looking in 36 feet, 37 feet right now way down there. So I'm just gonna kind of back off here into 37, 40 feet, let it go down. Okay, it's on the bottom, but we're only in 15 feet, because that ledge kind of comes out 15 feet, then it kind of goes down to 16, 18, 20, and I'm just gonna kind of pull it, pull it along like this. Just kind of every once in a while. I don't sit there and, and uh, I don't know what it is about Arizona, but you know, jiggling that rod all the time, they like it pulled. For some reason, then fish like it just kind of pulled away. But you need to find out what do they want. Do they want the, Do they want a, a lot of action like that? At night they do. I know here they like that at night, that jigging and the tw pulling like this and shaking. So I'm dropping down in the 32, 34 feet. I'm on the bottom still, and I'm still going to jiggle it and, and shake it. There's a lot of action down there. So let's try it again, see if we can't get another one down there. Well, I tell you what, there's some nice fish down there. I don't know why they're not, I don't know if I'm fishing too fast or I need to slow down a little bit, but. Okay, she's falling off this ledge. I told you this ledge comes way out here. Now it's down to 32 feet and I can see some big arcs down there. So I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit. Uh-oh, just got hit. There it is. Oh, it's coming up. Oh boy, that was deep, 32 feet. I like to kind of bring them up slow because if you bring them up too fast, you give them the bends, you know, when you get a bigger fish. Oh boy, look at this. Woo, that's a big one. She's up in the four pound range. Look at this. Whoa, come on. She's, uh, don't like it because I brought her out of her home real deep. All right, all right. You can see where that hook, hook that fish, right on the top, right where you want to, right on the very top of that thing. But by moving around and trying different things, you know, fishing shallow, but that is one nice fish. That's, that's a good fish, real heavy, maybe three and a half to four. All right, got a little water on her. Look at that, she's a nice fish, nice big female. All right, we're gonna let her go and let her, Give her a little oxygen there because she came from really deep. So I'm going to kind of push her down, let her go down. 